archaeologist, philosopher, bonsai aficionado, author, black belt, and squanderer of over 50,000 hours watching B-movies. He uses this wealth of useless knowledge to bring you classic movie reviews with snark and world-famous short summaries. Now broadcasting from beautiful downtown Tallahassee, it's Classic Movie Reviews with Snark. Welcome to the show. My name is John. As always, you can subscribe to the show on iTunes or follow the links to social media in the podcast show notes. Today we are looking at the first of our 2015 horror movies, episode 41, Zombies on Broadway, 1945, and it's a comedy. Surprise. I have the feeling that this episode will be on the short side. This movie ain't about much. It does have some serious racial stereotyping. However, it has a few stars and a couple of actors that will show up in future podcasts. So let's jump right in and start going over the comic talent. Wally Brown and Alan Carney were a movie comedy duo that were active from 1943 to 1946. Brown stayed a bit player in movies while Carney had a few larger roles such as the navigator in The High and the Mighty with John Wayne. Carney was a straight man while Brown was the comic relief. In this movie, Wally Brown played the role of Jerry Miles while Alan Carney played the role of Mike Strager. The pair were playing as press agents for a nightclub that would be opening in New York City. Sheldon Leonard plays a semi-reformed gangster and future nightclub owner, Ace Miller. Leonard was born in New York City. I'm seeing a trend. After graduating from university, Leonard went to work as a stockbroker, but was cast out of work by the 1929 crash. At the time, he made the choice to go into acting, which seems an odd choice when 25% of the population was out of work. It took five years before Leonard made it on Broadway. On the strength of his work, he began getting movie roles. However, his looks kept him in villain and tough guy roles. One example of a tough guy role was that of the brutal bartender in It's a Wonderful Life, 1946, when George Bailey was seeing what life would be like without him. In 1950, Leonard moved into a successful television production career. Louis Jean Haydett played the role of radio man Douglas Walker. Following college, Haydett worked as a journalist, then he started working on stage from 1927 to 1948. In the mid-30s, he went to Hollywood and became a regular fixture. However, he never made it big, so you are more likely to recognize his face and not his name. Ian Wolfe played curator Professor Hopkins, an all-around zombie expert. Wolf was born in 1896 in Canton, Illinois. He began his career working in theater and did not start in the movies until he was 38. Amazingly, he had over 800 movie and television roles. He generally played the role of an almost unnoticed background character, such as a butler. Elderly, thin, and bald, he would most often not be noticed, but his roles were often the types where he would say at the end, of course he was a vampire. That's not an actual quote from a movie, but it should be. At the age of 85, he played the butler for Mrs. Carlson on the television show WKRP in Cincinnati that ran from 1978 to 82. The biggest star in the movie had a small role. Bella Lugosi was Professor Paul Renault, head zombie scientist. Lugosi was covered in episode 20, White Zombie, 1932. However, as a reminder, he had been shooting morphine products since 1935. Ann Jeffries played island nightclub singer Jean LaDancy. Well thought out name there. Primarily a singer, she began modeling in her youth and continued working towards a singing career until she landed a role on stage in 1940. Her first movie role was in I Married an Angel, 1942. She worked under contract for Republic Pictures and RKO, but she was mostly cast in B-Westerns and crime dramas. Her movie career ended in the late 40s. She did more singing, television, and stage work, but could never get her career back to where it was. Sir Lancelot was uncredited as a Calypso singer. He was born Lancelot Pinard in 1902 on the island of Trinidad. It is said that he did not pick up his love for Calypso until he was studying in New York in the 1940s. Using the name Sir Lancelot, he wrote and performed Calypso and acted on the side. 
Some of the movies where he sang Calypso are Zombies on Broadway, 1945, I Walked with a Zombie, 1943, and the very dark film noir prison movie Brutal Force, 1947. Lancelot had a role in one of my personal favorites, The Buccaneer, 1958, as Scipio. The name, of course, is derivative of the famous Roman family that was known for being able to win battles in Africa when other Romans couldn't. You know the old Latin expression, only a Scipio can win in Africa. Finally, there was Darby Jones, who played a small role as Kalaga, the zombie. I think the zombie is right. This guy is scary. Jones was around Hollywood for about 25 years and played in roles such as natives and servants. Story. Two jokers, Jerry Miles, Wally Brown, and Mike Strager, Alan Carney, are being paid as press agents for a New York City nightclub. They are drumming up business. See what I did there? Business for the Zombie Hut, which is opening on Friday the 13th. They are having leaflets dropped on the city, and the film uses cut-in scenes of ticker tape parades to show the leaflets coming down. It seems like they're doing a good job, but there's just one hitch. They say they're going to produce a live, authentic zombie for the opening. When club owner Ace Miller, Sheldon Leonard, comes in flanked by his two tough guys, it is clear that Ace is not reformed as a gangster. He is happy with what Jerry and Mike are doing until he hears the part about the live zombie. Jerry and Mike show him the actor, Sam, Martin Wilkins, that will play a zombie. Come on over here. Come on up, boss. I'm G and Adam up. Yes, sir. That's it. You a zombie? This the man who's paying my salary? Uh-huh. Then, boss man, I'm a zombie. Wait a minute. It says here a real zombie. What's the idea of trying to run in a ringer? Who said he's a ringer? I said so. That guy's as phony as a paper cigar. Ace is calm for a bit until he discovers that they have given exclusive radio access to Douglas Walker. Lewis Jean hated. Walker is a crusading radio investigative journalist in the mold of Walter Winchell. Walker has hated Ace and been out to get him for years. Ace threatens to kill Jerry and Mike unless they can produce a real zombie before the opening. Walker comes into the club and reads a smear story that he is going to read about having a real zombie and ripping off the public. To make matters worse, Walker knows Sam as a local boxer. Ace tells a pair of press agents that they will be killed on opening night if there is no zombie. Jerry and Mike go to the International Museum and they are led in by Worthington, Nick Stewart. They are then taken to the bone room where they meet Curator Hopkins, Ian Wolfe. What can I do for you? Well, you see, we're looking for an old... Ouch! An old ouch? Uh, no, you see, we're scientists and we're entering a new field of research and we thought maybe you could help us. Uh, what field is it, gentlemen? Um, zombies. Zombies? Uh-huh. Zombies. But do you know what zombies are? Oh, I don't. I'm not too sure. Me neither. They are the living dead. Oh, me, oh, my. Worthington, come back here. Then please, don't say the living dead stuff, boss. I'm one of the living living, but you give me the feeling if I stays around here, I'm going to be one of the dead dead. After the pair explains what they want, Hopkins tells them his old school chum left 25 years ago to research zombies in the only known place of existence, on San Sebastian, one of the smaller Virgin Islands. What? Everybody knows that Haiti or half of Hispanola is the correct location. I guess when you borrow sets from another movie, you have to make a little, uh, compromise. Mike and Jerry decide to escape to California. Back at their apartment, they are talking smack about Ace when Ace pops up on the couch. The two thugs put the pair on a boat to San Sebastian. They arrive at San Sebastian and are greeted with a song played by actor Sir Lancelot. Glaring at them in the distance is scarred henchman Joseph, Joseph Vital. Joseph makes it to a plantation by nightfall. Inside, Professor Paul Renault, Bella Lugosi, is working on making a scientific zombie. This has got to work. It's got to. Wasn't the last experiment a success, Doctor? Success? Come, I show you. Covering up my latest experiment. Oh, what is wrong? What is wrong? How can the natives do with their silly voodoo what I cannot accomplish by scientific means? Perhaps because a zombie is something of the devil, not of science, Doctor. Nonsense! Nonsense! You have seen what I've been able to do. You have seen me create a zombie. If only I could keep them in that state. If only they didn't die. Return to normal in a short period. 
Renault sends Kalaga, Darby Jones, to get new non-native subjects. Jerry and Mike go to the local island cafe where Jean LaDance, Ann Jeffries, is singing and doing a knife-throwing act. What's the idea of scaring my way? We didn't do anything to him. No, he just asked us our business and Jerry told him. That's right. I think he's a secret drinker. And what is your business? Well, at the moment, we're looking for a zombie. Yeah, in reasonably good condition. You fools to joke about a thing like this. Oh, take my word for it, mister. It's no joke. No, we really gotta have one. You're crazy. Both of you, there's no such thing. Even to speak of his death. Jean comes over when they ask for a zombie. She wants a way off the island and will help them find a zombie in exchange. Jean takes Jerry and Mike into the jungle while Kalaga follows. Since it's a full moon, the drums start beating. They see a cow skull and a dead black panther, the animal kind, but keep going. Kalaga captures Jean. Jerry and Mike decide to hide in the hut by the zombie ceremonial ground. Since there's one of these huts by every zombie ceremony ground, they must change in there and keep their extra zombie costumes in there. Mike hides in a burial box while Jerry dresses in blackface. Mike falls in the fire and Jerry runs away in the box with a monkey. Mike, Jerry, and the monkey find the wall to the plantation of Renault. Joseph and Renault are preparing to turn Jean into a zombie. Joseph finds Jerry and Mike and takes them into the house. They meet Renault. They meet Renault and they catch him in a lie about why he's on the island. How tall are you? Uh, five foot nine. Thank you. You're welcome. You're in unusual shape, but do you mind lying down here? Oh, no, not at all. Hey! What's my shape got to do with it, and what's these holes for anyway? Why must you be so suspicious? What kind of a guest are you? The doctor said he needed some holes to plant some stuff in. The least we can do is dig them. Don't be ungracious about it. Oh, I'm sorry. They do the dirt throwing gag and then Jerry falls through the bottom of the grave into a tunnel where he sees Kalaga. Joseph gets the pair and takes him to their room. Kalaga goes to get Mike to be turned into a zombie. Renault's perfect formula turns Mike into a zombie. He then sends him back to the room and tells Kalaga to get Jerry. The monkey steals the formula and Gene escapes freeing Jerry. Renault and the monkey do the switch door trick with the drawers of a chest of drawers. Renault keeps saying kill, kill, kill to Kalaga, who then kills Renault and buries him out back. Jean, Jerry, Mike, and the monkey make it past the voodoo ceremony crowd by one, being a real zombie, and two, pretending to be a zombie. This includes the monkey walking by with outstretched arms. Back in New York, Zombie Mike and the crew are picked up at the dock by Ace's henchmen. Walker and Hopkins are in the club, waiting for the smear when there's no zombie. The zombie formula wears off just before the show and Mike comes back to normal. Ace comes in and sees there's no zombie. As Ace gets ready to kill the pair, the monkey gives the formula to Gene. Gene hits the lights and bullets fly. They reveal the zombie in the club and it's Ace. Walker and Hopkins agree it's a zombie as Jerry sits on a needle and turns into a zombie. World famous short summary. Two men go on an island vacation and bring back a monkey. If you have enjoyed this week's episode, please tell your friends, and if you really want to help, drop over to iTunes and give me a review. If you want to comment, recommend a movie, or just say hi, follow the links in the show notes to my site. Beware the Moors.